Okay, today in the Smith Botics extremely small little electronics table here, we're going to be talking about batteries, which is the right battery for you to choose for your robot or electronics project, which one I've ultimately decided to use for my dream robot down the road. And uh, this is all coming up next in this video, so stay tuned. Alkaline batteries is probably <clears throat> probably one of the most common uh, batteries you can find anywhere. That's one of its biggest pros. You can find these in supermarkets. You can find them in electronic stores, uh, drug stores. They're everywhere, and you'll find them oftentimes in the impulse aisle. People realize, oh, I need a battery for that remote, um, or I need it for this or the toy or whatever. Um, so that's one of the biggest pros of alkaline batteries. You can find them everywhere in all sorts of sizes, whether it be D, uh, AA, or smaller AAA, 9 volt batteries, uh, even a large lantern battery if you need it. So um, definitely uh, available, and that's probably one of the biggest um, pros for them. Long shelf life is another one. They don't last forever, as you'll see in a moment, um, but uh, you know, pretty good long shelf life for those. Um, they got a uh, good um, high and low temperature performance as well, which is always a plus in anything that's going to be, uh, you know, used remotely as you need for batteries. Um, one of the cons for alkaline batteries is they're disposable. So once the power is gone, uh, they become useless and you need to dispose of them responsibly, of course. Um, but you know, that, that's it. Uh, they're a one-time use battery and that would be probably one of the biggest, um, cons, uh, especially if you're going to be having a project where you're going to be doing a lot of, um, you know, different, uh, things with your, your project or robots and, you know, want to keep replacing batteries all the time. You want to be able to recharge them. Um, so that, that's one of, uh, their cons. They don't work well in high drain devices since the internal resistance uh, is going to limit uh, the output uh, current flow. But uh, if you're just doing a little small project, a lot of times for Arduinos, uh, you know, plug on one of these instead of hooking it up to all the wires, power supply, that way I can take it wherever I want if I'm working on the couch or you know, whatever. <laughs> so, or if I'm just taking it remotely, it's just a, a nice quick, easy way to experiment and, and to test out things. So alkaline batteries definitely have their place, but not the one I chose for my ultimate project, but could be for yours or like I said, just for general purpose use. This is an alkaline battery that has seen better days. Um, this one was in an electronics device quite some time. As you can see, the bottom part is bulging out. Um, top part is all corroded. Uh, alkaline batteries are notorious for leaking when they get kind of old. Uh, that's why sometimes if you have them in old devices, uh, you're probably not going to use. You probably want to just get rid of um, the batteries, take them out. Um, basically, this happens because hydrogen gases uh, eventually start to you know, leak out. And that leaves a trail of potassium peroxide corrosion that's going to form the top. You're going to see that kind of crusty white stuff there and that's what that would be i'm wearing gloves um kind of small gloves because uh, it's it's quite toxic and it can cause skin and uh, eye irritation so you want to be careful with that if you have them on your terminals on this old device i had um, as you can see there's a little bit of corrosion on the negative terminal there and i can clean that off with a little vinegar so the acid will uh, take that out and then a little alcohol after that to clean it up and it'll be as good as new. And this battery though is toast. Lead acid batteries. This is um, a gel lead acid batteries. Um, these do have some um, pros. Uh, typically these are used for higher power applications. Um, you know, there there's two main types. There's a flooded lead acid uh, uh, battery of uh, VRLAs. Um, they have a liquid electrolyte in them. Those are the type you normally see in, in a lot of different cars, or at least some of the older cars particularly. Um, 
and they'll have you know the liquid in them so they can't be turned up and side down and around which is not normally something that a car is going to do unless you're extremely unfortunate um, but there's also this type here which is a lead uh, sealed lead acid it uses a gel type electrolyte uh, it doesn't have any memory effect like uh, NICAD batteries um, so uh, it has its its purposes. I was actually thinking initially that maybe I could use this in the legs of the robot. I thought it might be a safer battery technology to use. But as I did more research and as I felt one of these, it just didn't seem practical. This is made out of lead and lead is extremely heavy. So even though the legs would just be moving up a little bit each time, it just didn't seem very practical. And as I found out more about um, this kind of battery type, it really just didn't make any sense. And there are some safer alternatives that I could use for that. So being heavy is one of their biggest issues for the um, sealed um, gel uh, types, um, kind of a poor energy density as well. Might be good for your project, though. Sometimes they're using alarm units, um, various uh, higher power um, applications where, you know, it's not going to move around a lot. Um, and, and, you know, can just take a little trickle charge. They do prefer that more so than, you know, heavier charges. So, yeah, that, that's lead-acid battery for you. Nickel-cadium batteries. Um, this is a very popular um, rechargeable battery. You can find them in many places. Not as common as alkaline, but... Um, very easy to find, uh, very popular for, you know, various consumer electronics that have, um, you know, the need to keep, you know, putting in batteries. Um, they uh, are relatively low cost uh, as well. They have higher energy, den en uh, higher energy density uh, than their sealed uh, lead acid brothers um, battery. And essentially, um, you know, they will cycle around a thousand times, um, you know, for these batteries. Some of the cons of them, they do suffer from what's called a memory effect. Um, so if you, if the battery goes down to a certain level and you pull it out and you recharge it again, it's going to kind of mem you know, re remember that level and think, oh, I should be charged to here instead of up here. Um, so that is one of the effects that can essentially reduce the life of it and efficiency because if it's only going to a certain voltage um, when you wanted it to go all the way up here, you're not going to have as effective an experience with that. Uh, one of the other issues is that, um, you know, they are generally in these packages, you'll see like double A and, you know, triple A, same packages you'll find in regular batteries. So it makes them easy to interchange with, you know, various devices, but their voltage is a little less. It's 1.2 volts um, generally for these, whereas um, an alkaline battery of the same type is going to have 1.5 volts. So sometimes you need a little more, sometimes it's not going to last as long. Um, so, you know, that's one of its uh, downsides. And they do perform best when they're uh, deeply cycled and don't perform very well when they're shallow cycled. Um, so these definitely have a, a place. Um, many uh, smaller robots, uh, you know, like kit robots and all that, they'll have um, something like this to utilize. Um, it's just a convenient way you can get chargers for these. Oftentimes they sell the chargers with the batteries themselves. Um, so they're, they're very common and um, can be useful. I use them for... Uh, camera equipment I have just make sure I just drain the battery completely and then recharge them and start all over again so uh, definitely have a place uh, but not with my particular robot project that I'm contemplating so uh, this just will not work uh, for that might work for a project of yours though so something to keep in mind lithium ion batteries um, these are very popular batteries that are found in many devices that you probably are holding in your hands. They're found on this device that's recording uh, this video right now. Um, they have um, uh, roughly twice the energy density of NICOD rechargeable batteries. They have uh, none of that uh, memory effect um, that NICODs, uh, NICADs do have. 
a relatively low um, self-discharge rate as well. You know, just when they're stored, they can be rapidly charged. Um, and, and when they're charging, the batteries are, you know, relatively cool as well. So they have a great energy density, um, very popular uh, battery type um, and all sorts of things from electric cars, um, although there's another variant that they're using more now. Uh, cell phones, uh, you know, many devices. Uh, drones typically use these in a different package where they're smaller cells and just shrink wrapped. So you may actually see, if you see something in in some sort of device that's shrink wrapped, it's likely going to be a, a lithium ion. Some of the cons is this is the highest uh, cost rechargeable battery pretty much that you can get out there. So yeah, they, they're a little expensive. Um, they also have to be protected against excessive discharging and overcharging. It's very dangerous if you don't do that. Um, you know, these are 18... Uh, 650 batteries, 18 millimeters by 650 millimeters. Yeah, lithium ions um, can be dangerous if, if they're uh, overly charged or overly discharged. So they normally will come with these small little um, electronic circuit uh, when they're in packs or in your device. You need to design it with some sort of uh, control mechanism uh, to make sure that you know they're charged and discharged in a safe way. If you don't, these can explode. They can catch on fire. Uh, very uh, nice hot fire as well. So this has, you know, caused places to burn down and all that. So you want to treat that uh, charging process respect with respect. You don't just plug it into a charger and expect that, um, you know, it's, it's going to work as normal. So uh, it has to be special charging for these. You have to make special allowances for that. It was one of the reasons when deciding on, you know, did I want to include these into my uh, dream robot eventually, I decided um, against it. I was a little worried about the chemistry in these. Um, the battery management part didn't have a problem with. Uh, there's plenty of circuitry you can find and designs you can find to help with that. Um, but that part made me a little nervous and a little hesitant to use these. Am I going to use them on other projects? Oh yeah, heck yeah. Um, this is great. Uh, like I said, the energy density is, is fantastic as long as you have a good charging um, circuitry there. Um, you know, they're, they're fine to use on just standard projects. The problem with a robot though is a robot's going to walk around. It's going to be doing a lot of physical things. And if this gets punctured, I mean, you can, don't do it yourself. It's very dangerous. But if this gets punctured, you can see internet um, videos on YouTube of, you know, what happens. And it's not pretty. So um, definitely didn't think it was good for a robot because, you know, they can fall. You know, things are going to happen. You know, they're in the physical world. So if they fall and something pierces this, then you have a fire and you're uh, very expensive um, built robot um, that you know would have taken you a long time is going to go up in flames and it's going to become a danger to you and your household. So um, decided this particular chemistry, um, even the lithium uh, polymer type, uh, just wasn't right for me. So I'm not going to use those in my particular project, but they're very good for many different projects and, and you may find a lot of good uses uh, for those and whatever kind of package that you do find. As long as you have the right circuitry to keep it safe, make sure when you're charging those, uh, you have a really good uh, charger specific to this battery chemistry, then you should be okay. Which now brings me to the lithium iron phosphate, um, commonly referred to in internet searches as LIFEPO4. Um, you know, for the iron uh, content, essentially, uh, iron phosphate. Um, these are lithium cells still. Um, their voltage is uh, a little bit less, um, you know, 3.3 volts. This one's a 1,100 milliamp, uh, 3.6 uh, watt hour. So their energy density is a little less than you'd find on your standard lithium ion or lithium ion polymer uh, batteries, um, but they're quite a bit more stable. Um, they have uh, pretty much the same properties. Again, a little bit less uh, voltage. Uh, your charge um, rate is going to be a little less. Um, 
so far as the voltage that you're going to reach. Uh, because of that, uh, you don't want to overcharge these or over discharge these, just like uh, other lithium uh, batteries. But because it's um, you know lithium iron phosphate, the chemistry is more stable. So if you overcharge these, which you don't want to do, because it's still going to produce heat and gases and it's not safe, um, but if you overcharge these, they don't tend to explode. They tend to swell up and eventually you start to, you know, issue out some gas and stuff, which shouldn't be good for breathing. So you definitely don't want to do that. You still want to have circuitry on these. Um, but the battery chemistry is a lot more stable. They don't generally catch on fire. They don't generally explode. Um, they will get some discomfort and swell up and start to spew some stuff but uh, definitely much safer chemistry. Um, a lot of these are, are now gonna be used on, on many more cars. I uh, figured if I have a robot and they're doing all sorts of stuff and they're, they're interchanging with the physical world, they may fall. And if I have any sort of issue with these, this is a much safer alternative. So the lithium uh, iron phosphate, um, is the battery of choice for my dream robot. It might be a good choice for you too on your particular project. Again, the you know the voltage is just a little bit less than you normally get out of these. You might have to plan for more, particularly if you're going for a higher uh, voltage. Um, so just a, a shade below, um, well, a little less um, than you'd find uh, energy density wise uh, from the lithium ion um, with the ion polymers. But the uh, safety factor in the chemistry just makes them really attractive, particularly for my application. Might be good for your particular application too, depending on um, you know, if that safety factor uh, is good for you and if the reduced voltage uh, will work for you as well. So that is going to be my choice for the Dream Robot. Um, I'm actually thinking about having, you know, of course, they're going to have to have their own circuitry, just like uh, lithium uh, ion in general um, to make sure they don't overcharge or over discharge. Um, so I'm still going to have that and it's going to be multiple packs. I'm going to probably have these in multiple locations throughout the robot, uh, all tied into the general power system, but that way I can distribute the weight. Um, these are again, 18, six, uh, 18, 650 packages. Um, not much more than the, you know, regular lithium ion. Um, but that's essentially the plan for the robot ahead. So, you know, they come with little buttons. Uh, sometimes this one's a flat head. Uh, but, um, you know, that's that's the battery of choice for my robot in the future. Might be the battery of choice for your particular project as well. So that is uh, the one I'm going to choose. Well, that's our Smith Botic overview of um, battery technology and uh, what might be right for your particular project. What are the pros and cons of each different uh, type of standard battery type out there? As you can see, uh, Bruce does need a new battery, so I'm going to have to work on that because he has stopped his clock. Um, but uh, hopefully you found this uh, video uh, helpful uh, as we learn new things uh, towards our ultimate uh, dream project. Um, you know, we're going to be sharing them in these YouTube videos. So if you like what you saw, just hit subscribe. And uh, we do thank you for watching and take care.